Welcome to the Romance Class YouTube channel and our series featuring the audio edition of my book, Iris After the Incident, narrated by Rachel Coates. Subscribe to our channel to be notified when new chapters go up. Head over to romanceclassbooks.com for more romance by Filipino authors. Content warnings are mentioned in Chapter 1 and are included in the description for this video. Chapter 6 why do you look like shit? You can't even be bothered to look decent on my birthday. Shut up, Liam. My voice probably sounded like a frog's, but it was appropriately affectionate, I hoped. Liam would have understood. We've been sarcastically affectionate for most of our lives. Happy birthday. At least, I hoped he understood. But when I lowered my sunglasses as I gave him a kiss on the cheek, and immediately my eyes began to water from the slight exposure to the afternoon. I wondered if I did lower the bar this time around. I didn't get much sleep. He looked happy, though, which is what mattered. Liam was single right now, and I wasn't sure if he'd been in a mood on his birthday. Leave it to my brother, though, to be consistently the life of his own party, no matter what was happening in his life. When I saw what he had set up for me, the sunglasses came back on to keep him from seeing the tears welling up. He'd pulled out the plastic table from the utility room and set it for two. It was a freaking tea party, pot of tea, two dainty matching cups, caramel crunch cake. So, how was your party, party boy? I asked. Oh, you know, the same. It can't be. 25, right? You always said it would be a great one. Oh, you mean the wine bar party, the real one that you missed, with kids our age and not our aging relatives and their amigas? Of course it was the best. I greeted my mid-twenties with a bang. Oh, God, I said, taking the plastic chair that I assumed was mine. I sure hope you meant the good kind of bang. He grabbed my hand, forcing it into a high five with his. Why, yes, sister, the good kind of bang. Safe? No other way. He scooted his chair closer to mine. Your concern is always appreciated. And then we were quiet. Liam and I were close, and never had trouble talking, even when the worst was happening around us. That was one of the things I'd taken as truth. I never tested. Today, I was here, at home, for the first time in a long time because of him, but it wasn't only him here. There was a lot to be processed. This chair, that table... The backyard, the smell of dirt and grass, that door that led to the kitchen, into the dining room, those voices, the familiar tones of Sunday afternoon merienda conversation. It wasn't as scary as I was making it out to be, right? Hey, Liam snapped a finger in front of me. Anything new with you? Oh, how to even talk about it? My brother was often concerned for me, and the past few times he'd asked anything new, I had nothing to add. I was fine. Nothing's new. Goodbye and see you next time. We tolerated this for months because there was no way to talk about what was better. Maybe he hoped that I'd say something good, because it meant life had moved on beyond two years ago. What could I tell him now? Where would I even begin? The doors to the backyard slid open, and some of the voices from inside came out, in their fleshy bodies too. See, this shouldn't have been a problem. I'd prepared myself mentally for this moment, for being at home and seeing certain people. I'd steeled my guts for this, knowing I had to at some point, and Liam's birthday was a good time to start. Still, it felt like my blood ran cold. Oh my god, my mother said, clearly shocked. Iris, I didn't know you were coming. Oh my god, Iha, my dad's oldest sister, Tita Ira, said at the same time. Were you here the whole time? I just arrived, I told her. Because, Liam, I told you I'd be inviting Counselor Keith and Brother Julian and oh, we're taking so many photos. And the worst thing in the world would be if I were accidentally in a photo with them. In my own house. Liam cleared his throat. Uh, um, no, Tita, Mom, you know I never invite the cool guests into the house with the old people. Your visitors are safe from us. Tita Ara was not a fool. In fact, 
She was the very definition of not a fool, at least for me, and she had an influence over my mother and this house. Our house was hers, our parties hers, my shame hers. This isn't a joke, Liam, she said. Will there be trouble? Not at all, I said, standing up. I came over to greet Liam, and I've done that. I'll go now. I didn't realize... My mother was stuck in the world from 90 seconds ago, still struggling to come up with a proper thing to say. Iris, you should at least say hello to your dad. Well, how could I even do that after this awkwardness fest? I'd already said I was going, so I did that, standing up and backing away. I knew no one would stop me. The one thing they always let me do throughout this mess was walk away. And so I walked, in my white tennis shoes, sunglasses my only disguise. I let myself out the white gate, took the alley that led to the back street, and then didn't stop until I made it out to the main road where I could hail a cab. My phone was ringing. It was vibrating in my little bag, but I ignored it for as long as I could, answering only when it started up again. Come back, Iris, Liam said. No, I told my brother. I, I can't believe that all happened again. I'm sorry, I didn't think... It's my birthday, damn it. I thought they'd be better. Yeah, well, that sucks, because it's not me, it's them. I love you, but you won't ever put me in that position again, okay? I'm really sorry. Let me make it up to you. There's nothing you can do. At least let me drive you back. I'm already in a cab. That was a lie. Clearly. I'll see you around. Well, shit. There went that possibility of normal. I told myself that I wouldn't resort to alcohol to numb myself when these things happened. Numbing led to bad decisions, and I couldn't afford a grander fuck-up than what was already there. The incident had led me to lose not only most of my family, but also my closest friends so I had very few options for venting and relief. I had Janine, sure. But calling Janine on a Sunday? That was serious. That was dignifying this as a major thing, and I wanted it downgraded, demoted, crushed into the ground. So when the cab let me out at Envy Park, I bought a bottled water and walked. And walked. And walked. Walked around the complex, past the open field where 9J, Gio, apparently played football on Saturdays. Past the restaurants where I bought my meals, past the grocery store that would probably have basil right now because I didn't need it, past the office buildings, the pet park, the jogging trail, around and around until I had gone around four times or more, and the sun was setting. Sometimes I did this, when things, even if only in my head, went a little crazy. The endorphins lifted my mood. The silence of the walk cleared my head. The bright and busy scenery was no longer scary, but a crowd I could hide in. Sometimes it worked, and by the end of the journey I was less angry, felt less of a victim. Or maybe it was the body chemistry telling me to go on another day. Because the world, yes, had more things in it than the things and people I didn't like. By the time I made it back to my tower, I'd given a few things a lot of thought. I left a message for Matilda at the lobby receptionist's desk. And then I slipped a note underneath Gio Mella's door. I don't care, it said. I hope you don't too. Iris Len Larioca, 9M. That was Chapter 6 of Iris After the Incident, narrated by Rachel Coates. Text and production copyright by Mina Vies Guerra. There's a hurtful family reunion in this book, but you can read about warmer family dynamics in Dare to Love by C.P. Santi. Link in the description.